fill to red and change the line color, which is the line around it. Let's change the line to uh, yellow. And let's make the line larger. Here's a line toolbox. I can, what size? Let's make a big yellow line around it. Now, I'd also like the arrow to have a shadow. So I'm going to go into the shadow tool and pick up a shadow. And the shadow came out gray, so I'm going to change the shadow color to black. Now I have a red arrow, yellow outline, black shadow. I can still, at any point, adjust the size of the arrow or adjust the position of the arrow. With my arrow with, I'm using these arrow buttons to do that. I can also rotate it. Let's go up here into the Rotate tool right there. Now it gave me some green dots around here. I can grab those green handles and twist my arrow at an angle. Okay, I want the arrow to do something besides just sit there. I want it to come flying in. Since I have it selected, I can go under the slideshow button here under animations, custom animation or preset. There's about 30 of them that are preset if you want it to fly in or drop in. I'm going to do a custom one. I want this arrow that is selected. Right now it says there's no effect. I'm going to click on the box here and go down. What do we want it to do? Let's see. Fly from the top. Tell it OK. Tell it OK. Now I'll back up one slide, page up, take me back to my Axel Island. I have to go actually into the looks like a movie to a pull pull down movie screen right here. This is the box that lets me get into the actual view mode. This is what people see on the screen. Now when I page down, it should bring in just the first box. Then I bring in the second box, which I made the yellow words. Now it should bring in the arrow. And it, oh, I told it to fly from the right, I guess. Let's try that again. Okay, it text and it flew from the right. Uh, and then the next will go to the next slide. So if I hit escape, it'll take me back to the edit mode. I will take that particular arrow and delete it. I don't want an arrow there. It's gone. Control S will save the changes I made, including the yellow font. You could do, you can make transitions within the slide where the arrow comes flying in or the text comes flying in. I'll show you a few that I've got here. Uh, let's see. Let's make this text come in paragraph at a time. Every time I click the mouse button, it's going to bring in a paragraph. So I must hit Enter. Enter will make it a new paragraph. I now have two paragraphs here. I'm going to scoot it up a little because I'm running off the bottom of the screen. Save the changes. Control S. Uh, Alt D M is gets me back to the custom animation, or you can do it up here. Right now, the computer is being told to make this appear, just make the letters appear, all at once by level paragraphs, because I checked the little box here. If I would like it to come flying in by paragraphs, it'll bring in a paragraph or zoom in, or you can play around with that and see it. It'll do all sorts of neat things. Let's tell it, OK. OK. Back up one. Let's test it out. Now it should bring it in a paragraph at a time. OK, there's my picture of Axel Island, Hoven Theory, first paragraph, second paragraph as I hit the button. If it hooks into your projector, the projector should come with a remote mouse that allows you to uh, just click up or down and go page up or down with your remote mouse. So I can sort my slides. I can edit each individual slide. I can put all sorts of fancy animations to it. I can change the background. I can insert pictures either from clip art or from pictures that I scan in. And with a little playing around, it's really not complicated. I decided to use the font style that is called Gaudi Sans Medium Bold. Gaudi, G-O-U-D-Y, S-A-N-S, -S, Gaudi Sans. We just tried them all and said that looks the best on screen from the back of the auditorium. It's easier to see. Some of the font styles are hard to see. And we try to use six or eight lines maximum per screen. If you have a Bible verse, for instance, and you want it's got 20 lines to it, put it in three or four slides rather than put it in uh, uh, all in one slide. In Corel Photo Paint, when I scanned in this picture of the fish giving birth, I did not take the time to take that line out. But once you scan in a picture, you can do all sorts of things to that picture. You can doctor it up. You can get rid of scratches or dots. Or I just didn't have time that day to fix it. But I could have actually erased things out of there, erased the text or added stuff. Um, and if I have time, I do that to a lot of my pictures. 
I have some Bible verses here. Let me go Alt-VD is the shortcut back to the view mode. The Bible verses that I use, let me pull one up here. They have several things on it. It has text, it has the reference, it has a little Bible, and it has two boxes just simply to add color. This is a box and it happens to be filled. Right here, I'll click on it and show you. Let's go to the fill tool. We're going to fill the box with two colors, fill effects. It gives me options. Right now it's filled gray shading over to gray at the ends, shading to red in the middle. I could change it to shade from gray to blue or gray to yellow. Let me change it gray to yellow. See what that looks like. Now it's gray on the ends and yellow in the middle. I could make the border around the box heavier or gone, no border at all, uh, with the border tool up here. It, you'd be amazed how, how fun it is, the different things you can do with PowerPoint uh, to make your presentation really look sharp. And I would encourage you to uh, uh, doctor things up, and uh, the idea is to get the gospel out and reach as many people as possible. If you have any questions, you can call me or call my office, call Brian. Uh, he's my computer guy, does this stuff for me. You can also do things between slides where when you click the button, the slide comes flying in instead of just the text comes flying in. The whole slide comes flying in or dissolving in or flipping in. And all of that stuff will be under the animations, under slide transition. And when you get PowerPoint, you should have a helps menu that will read, read you through, uh, walk you through most of these things like this. So basically, that's what I do. I scan in pictures or I type in the text. If you scan in a picture, it comes out... Uh, it takes up quite a bit of memory, uh, maybe up to half a megabyte. And so the more of those you get, the slower your computer will run, and the longer it takes, of course, to bring the pictures up. The more things you can actually do in PowerPoint, I mean, type in the text, that takes up almost nothing as far as memory size, so they're much faster to use. So I'd encourage you, if you're going to put in Bible verses, instead of scanning in from the Bible, just type in the text, because it'll, it'll save a lot of memory on your computer, and it'll be much faster booting up when you're standing there clicking the button. Uh, waiting for it to go. And you're welcome to use any of my material or call if we can be any help. Okay, we may add to this tape from time to time if we think of other ideas, but that's what we do around here. And uh, God bless you as you use our material to re reach others for Christ.